to Sebring uh, that last season and then the, st the streets of of St. Pete. So we, we've seen plenty of different races in the early parts of the two seasons that these great race cars have been back in the IMSA paddock and they always seem to deliver. Now we go to a natural terrain road circuit. They only got nine laps of racing tomorrow. Let's put that right as we bring IMSA Radio and IMSA TV back together. If you're tuned in at the track, you can watch as well www.imsaradio.tv and hit the live video button. It's time to go racing. <laughs> MX5 Cup, presented by BF Goodrich on IMSA Radio. Well, it's a beautiful day. Good to have your company and welcome to the sixth round of the 2022 Edemitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres. It is our second race here at the Natural Terrain Road Circuit of Mid-Ohio. Just under two and a half miles around, 13 corners. Although, in fairness, probably only 12 that the drivers would think of uh, as corners, maybe even 11, because turn three is just a kink on the run down from the keyhole to turn four. And also coming out of Thunder Valley, turn 10 is a right kink. Turn 11, well, yeah, you have to drive through that before you hit the carousel. Plenty of action areas, plenty of places for overtaking uh, at the keyhole, at turn four and at the carousel. But frankly, the Inamitsu Mazda MX-5 drivers try to make every single part of the racetrack and action area and that's what they've done for the last season and a third that they've been back in the IMSA paddock. Hello everybody I'm John Hindoff and Shea Adam uh, a pit lane and a paddock reporter and uh, she's back in the booth with us here in the Haggerty Glo Global Broadcast Centre for the sixth race of the season didn't get what we wanted uh, yesterday Shay, with uh, a race that was uh, Brought back to just nine laps. Great start from Matthew Dirks from his uh, first ever pole position for McCumbie Magalia Racing. And he held that, that uh, lead for quite a long time before down the inside at turn four. Favourite passing position for the number five car. And that, of course, of Gresham Wagner. They managed to uh, hold their positions for a little while. Then there was a, a, a problem for the number 80 that went around. Got a little bit of help on that. Then it was uh, Michael Thomas who went by Wagner for the lead in the number 96, Jared Thomas, excuse me, as he managed to steal the lead, but that didn't last very long as Jared was repassed in the number 96, the silver car, Wagner back to the lead, and then we had a yellow and then a red flag for extreme weather around the area, and that caused us to call the race early, and Shea Adam, that had a major effect because we didn't get the half distance, so we didn't get full points yesterday. Correct, and it meant that at the discretion of race control, they didn't have to award any points, but they chose to do half points. Have to say, very fair of race control. The full 10 points were still awarded to Matthew Dirks for his first ever pole position, but half points for everyone else, including leading the most laps, which again went the way of young Matthew Dirks, and then the fastest lap, which was Sam Paley. So half points awarded means that Jared Thomas is still our points leader at 1,400, but behind him, Celine Roland, 1,340. Gresham Wagner vaults up the standings, as we've seen him do before, into third, Sam Paley fourth, Connor Zilich, the best of our rookies in fifth, but right behind him, a mere 15 points back, Joey Atanasio. It is all to play for here in round six. The safety car is leading them around for the moment. We'll go to green flag on the downhill at the kink of turn three, but the clock will start as they pass the finish line on the pit straight next time around. Let's take a look at the Inamitsu Mazda starting grid and on pole position for the second time in two days, Matthew Dirks from McCombie McAleer Racing in the dark green, number 76 with the Air Force markings. He's got Jared Thomas lining up alongside him in the silver GTR Motorsports Engineering, number 96. Michael Carter is on the inside of row two for Carter Racing Enterprises in the zero eight car. Then Joey Atanasio, best of the rookies for formidable racing. 
on the outside of row two. In fifth position, row three, Gresham Wagner for Spark Performance, the number five car, Celine Roland, alongside him, Hicks and Motorsports. Two very fast starters there. Watch the five and the 87 from row three. Rounding up the top ten, seventh position for Glenn McGee, JTR Motorsports, number 23, the 89 of Justin Piscatel for McCombie Magalia Racing. And then uh, on row number five, uh, Max Obaleski for uh, Copeland Motorsports, who's got Bryce Corday for company on the 10th position. Actually, whilst they're coming through the start, and the clock has started, the 45 minutes has started, let's continue, because everyone's qualified, so let's get, see how far down we can get. Bruce Caniero for Hickson Motorsport in 11th, Je uh, Aaron Johnson for Spark in 12th, 13th in Fastnacht, another one of the rookies, fourth in the rookie uh, qualifying standings there for this race for McCombie McAleer. He's got Jensen Altman qualifying outside the top 10. Jensen will not be happy about that. Got a good finish yesterday. Tyler Gonzalez and David Starp are on row eight. Alex Bashura and Anthony McIntosh on uh, row nine. And on row 10, Jean Dot Jodois and Woody Hyman as they come out of the keyhole and the cars are lined up really nicely let's stand by for action we'll get down to about 44 minutes now the green flag is waving right now down towards turn four and a good start by the pool center but it's very very closely matched as they head down to turn four the right hand of the first time pulling out from row two trying to get through Gresham Wagner sitting down the inside there. He has a look, but the pool sitter squeezes across to the inside as they crest the brow at turn five for the first time. And it's a good jump away from the pool sitter. Matthew Dirks then doing what he did yesterday with Jared Thomas, JTR, going with him in that silver car with the yellow rollover hoop. Fourth place for Michael Carter. Joey Atanasio's had a good run as well at the front of the field as he comes through in the third position the black car with the green markings on the side and the green mirrors on the doors just looking a little bit further back to see if everybody is doing all right yes they are you can see tyler gonzalez fighting uh, towards the middle of the teens there jensen ultimate going through as well in the number 13 cars they come across the line to complete the first lap and that is where the checkered flag will come out of course in 42 minutes and 41 seconds or thereabout nice clean opening uh, to the race and once again for a driver who's not had pole positions before this weekend Matthew Dirks from Akumbi Magalia Racing Share has done a pretty good job no he's done much better than that he's done an excellent job he certainly has the 2019 team Mazda Challenge champion he was second in rookie of the year in 2020 and in 2021 the regional spec Z champion he's got a lot of experience racing Mazdas but not at this level and not with this level of competition doing a fantastic job to hold on to that lead from Jared Thomas who quite honestly looked happy to stay in the second place Joey Atanasio was the start for me trying to keep Michael Carter at bay in the champion from 2020 well that's easier said than done yeah it looked like he managed to get across and make that happen he's dropped into third position in the black and bright green car coming through the s's and towards a turn number nine now lovely stuff from the leading group Typically, if you're new to this, and welcome if you are just joining us for the Intermittent Mazda MX-5 Cup, wherever you are in the world, uh, no blocks, no breaks, no fees, no subscriptions, no information required, just settle back and enjoy. If you're at the track, you've got the best seat in the house, of course. But typically, we'll see this pack at the front of the field for the first maybe five or ten minutes, just jockey for position a little bit, and then they're just sort of... It's a bit like sparring early on in the <laughs> early rounds of a of a boxing match there's a little bit of jabbing there's a little bit of bobbing and weaving but ultimately they're trying to size up their opponents and find out where their weaknesses are compared to your own strengths talking to the drivers at various stages over the last couple of seasons they like to try and work together at the front of the field these cars do create quite a big hole in the air with the open top nature of the mx5 roadster and that big roll cage, the FIA-approved roll, roll cage, 
So you can, if you work together, try and make a little bit of a gap. So you'll try and get the lead group down from 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 2, maybe, within the <laughs> 45 minutes. Five minutes gone. No breaks at the moment, Shea, as basically what we're looking at is the top 10, I think, there, uh, all the way down to Aaron Johnson. In fact, even a little bit beyond that, I think Bruno Conheiro is right on the back of that. They're still all together as they break away from the rest of the field. Yeah, you're right, Don, and Bruno Carniero currently with the fastest lap, long way to go, but that's 10 bonus points for the championship. He'll be aware of that. Uh, you look at this group, and they do break apart every now and then, but it's very easy once they start battling amongst themselves for everybody to get reeled back in together. So if you start to see a breakaway, know that it is a temporary thing. We do not have gaps of well, five seconds, even at the finish lines of these races. If it's a two second gap, that's something remarkable. I think that was the biggest gap we had last year, actually, at the finish of a race. It's normally within tenths as they cross the finish line to determine who wins these races. And at the end of the year, winning the races, winning the most races, collecting the most points, results in $250,000. So that's exactly what you're looking for. Not an insubstantial amount of cash to take away. And you can take it away. You don't have to spend it in this or any other Mazda series. If you want to, you could uh, put it into a lovely round-the-world cruise. But these drivers tend to come back and continue to race and cash all the way down to... 10th in the championship and at the moment the top 11 or so is that Glenn McGee for JTR right on the back I think it is side by side for second place going through turn five Joey Atanasio has the R next to him on the timing screen that says he's a rookie he's not driving like one at the moment as he goes side by side with Jared Thomas through the S's and he squeezes his way through to second position for a moment he's three quarters of a car ahead and now he pulls in at the turn into turn nine and gets that in that was five corners in the making that overtake between third and second and Atanasio for formidable racing is up in the second position quality stuff respect and great driving from everyone concerned there she Adam. Yeah, and Gresham Wagner looking down the inside of Michael Carter and Jared Thomas. He gets it done on Carter. Has to be patient for Thomas, but that move for Joey Atanasio, the local to Miramar, Florida, very far away from here. He knows what it's like to be on the podium, John. He stood on it at Daytona in the third spot. He was one position off the podium in the first race in St. Pete. He wants to get another trophy. And right now, we have two young men leading the way of this race who are not accustomed to getting trophies, but they've got a taste for it. They want to keep going, just like Michael Carter on Gresham Wagner into the keyhole, takes back the position and brings Celine Roland with him. 87, that light colored car, side by side with the number five of Gresham Wagner with the orange hood and the green side panels. Tell you what, seven tenths of a second for the lead at the front of the field, Matthew Dirks. That's a big lead in Mazda Cup racing. And still side by side for Celine Roland in the 87 and the five of Gresham Wagner. And trying to get involved there as well is Bryce Cornet. Yeah, coming through very nicely in the 65 car. That's the Hickson, the dark soul red crystal car with the right stripe, white stripes. Bryce Cornet is another of the rookies. And yeah, sitting and well inside the top ten at the moment. And he again, he's right with the big hitters here, Shea. And Bryce Cornier has shown this kind of potential all year, John. He was second in the uh, Mazda scholarship winnings for this year. So he came away with slightly less funding for the program and hasn't had the results yet. But he has always raced well and been very strong. So glad to see Bryce finally mixing it up where he belongs in this field. Really good to see. By the way, fastest lap still maintained. Nope, just switched over. Michael Carter now gets those 10 bonus points. Guy who needs the points because, well, as far as championships go, this year has not gone the way of the 08 Carter Racing Enterprises machine. Indeed not. Uh, it's a season, if not to forget, certainly to put behind Michael Carter sitting in fourth in the red, white and black 08. Jared Thomas had his hand, hands on the 10 bonus points for about a second, possibly even less than that. Uh, the Point length of a one Mazda. Of a second, yeah, think. exactly. The, <laughs> the length of a, a Mazda as they went across the, the line before Michael Carter followed him through. 136.414 against a 136.499 last time around for those two charges, but at the front of the field. It's closed up again. 
Atanasio gets round the outside of turn four. That gives him the inside for the left-hander at the top of the hill at five. He sneaks a nose ahead, a hood ahead, a door ahead, a car ahead. He's gone through down to turn six and another change of lead as the rookie for formidable racing. Well named that team and great run for Joey Atanasio. Matthew Dirks has to settle for second at the moment and he's coming under pressure from Jared Thomas in the silver car in third. Top five just beginning to stretch away at the moment with Celine Roland and Gresham Wagner. Is he on the back of there as well? Yes, he is. So, in fact, it's the top six that are pulling away from the bright bluey purple of uh, Justin Piscatel, who's just come up into seventh position ahead of Bryce Cornet in the dark red car behind that. It's Aaron Johnson in the mostly white car. That's a change of colour scheme from him from last year. Aaron used to drive a dark red car, the same colour, in fact, of Bryce Cornet. So that was my memory playing tricks on me as they come through. That's the white with the red stripes on for Aaron Johnson. All the way up to the top of the hill again. Pala Gonzalez right in there as well for Copeland. Max Opalski as well. And it's coming back together again. As quickly as I say, there's five or six cars breaking away. As soon as the fight starts here, the, the cars behind are back on, and Piscatel is on to the leading group. He's, he's <laughs> made that jump across. Oh, here we go. Justin Piscatel, the guy who needs no introduction to uh, be welcomed into Monster Racing as Gresham Wagner gets sideways, trying to go around Celine Roland. It opens the door for Piscatel, who's going around the outside at five. He's going to have the optimum line going into six if he can make it stick. Can he, or are they going to stay side by side going through seven, eight, and possibly even nine? This is a battle that just will not go away. Uh, he's still got the preferred line through turn nine and that's where he should be able to make it stick and does so but again as soon as you fight you lose two three four five car lengths and now they've got to work together again there's no car to car radio here but you do sometimes see a few hand signals and i, and I mean of the uh, more pleasant variety between the drivers saying come on get on behind me stop fighting we're letting the leaders get away the leaders go across the line to complete another lap. This is a timed race and there's just over 30 minutes to go. Atanasio from Dirks, from Thomas, from Carter, Roland, Piscatel, Wagner, Aaron Johnson, Bryce Cornet, not too far away there as well. And just sitting there, the bright green car is Max Opalski, Bruno Caniero, Tyler Gonzalez is your top dozen. And they are having a great scrap at the moment. In this BF Goodridge Edomitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2022. Second race of the weekend as part of the Lexus Grand Prix here at Mid-Ohio. Bit of bump drafting going down to turn number four. And the top four are deciding what to do. Atanasio, second position behind Jared Thomas now. So Thomas has come through from third at the stripe to take that covered at first position do you want to lead now I'm, I'm not sure we're not saving fuel here this is a flat out blast and we've almost got the top 15 all back together I can see Glenn McGee in the JTR Motorsport engineering number 23 car in the background there and yeah it, it's once again all nose to tail shit Realistically, John, you could go from first to halfway down the field if you make one mistake in these cars, particularly with how close together they are right now. Jared Thomas took that chance. He went down the inside at the keyhole, got around not only Atanasio in the middle, but Dirks on the outside to take the lead of this. The car that I'm thinking is in the best position right now, though, Michael Carter. He's saving his tires, and Celine Roland very carefully watching this battle for first between the four cars ahead of him knows that the points they're not handed out right now but jared thomas realizes hey i can get 10 more points and maintain this championship lead if i lead the race for the most laps big money up for grabs the biggest prize purse for this form of racing probably anywhere in the world i was going to say in north america but probably anywhere in the world with over half a million dollars going into intermittent master mx5 cup uh, each year from Mazda Sport, making this not just and not necessarily a stepping stone, a destination championship now. Do well, and you can quite easily.
not only pay for your season's racing, but actually make a little bit of profit out of it. And if you've already decided, Shea, that you're going to set aside a certain number of thousand dollars to go racing, then frankly, anything you get back is a is a bonus. But the kind of money that we're talking about here could see your championship paid for for a position somewhere inside the top 10 of the championship. Oh, yeah. Well, it pays all the way down to 10th, as you said. But 250 grand for the win winner of the championship, 80 for second, which basically covers a full season of racing with two races per weekend and then six of the finest circuits that you could imagine going to in North America. There's also a grassroots scholarship, which Connor Zilich was the recipient of this year. That's $110,000 for career advancement. That means you get an opportunity to come race in this championship. There's a scholarship for the best woman as well that Mazda chooses. That went the way of Laura Hayes this year, and she's with Thunder Bunny Racing. I met her the other day running her own team with the help of a couple of her friends. It is just such good racing here and the value for the dollar and then getting money back out of it. Don, you're exactly right. You can keep funding your racing by yeah. winning in this championship. And look at the racecraft that is being employed here. Yeah. Gresham Wagner, the number five car, seventh position, and he's got basically half the rest of the field spreading out they go too wide drafting each other side by side bit of sound drafting there and that hurt Wagner as through comes Aaron Johnson he's really lit on the brakes and almost backs the white and red car with the blue hind quarters he's off the track on the left hand side with the BF Goodrich the number 24 car this is a cracking scrap for the bottom end of the top 10 there's a little bit of hip and shoulder and right in there as well Maxi Opalski for Copeland Motorsports with the bright green colours with the slash colours on the front, that's the Copeland Motorsport livery, got his teammate sitting in behind him there, Tyler Gonzalez that's the bright orange white and black car, again with that slash across the bonnet area of the car, that's how Copeland do all their cars but just in different colours and Piscatel's right in there as well, no he's got away from that, so that's it and Fastnacht for McCombie McAleer Racing who's in there I reckon that's seventh down to about 16th, 17th position. I think you're right on that, John. And Aiden Faxnacht, who's already been with one winning team this weekend. I'm not talking about McCombie Backler. I'm talking about Murillo Racing. Yesterday, he was hanging out in their pit box, learning as much as he could during the course of the Michelin Pilot Challenge race. And even though it's not a Mazda, he was still learning more about racecraft, where to pass, where the cars are vulnerable around this track. Looks like he learned some good stuff. Well, I, I did say that this has become somewhat of a destination championship. However, that said, uh, the races for the uh, most part are with IMSA and sanctioned by IMSA, uh, although raced uh, on the NTT IndyCar uh, series schedule at uh, St. Pete's on the streets earlier and will be with NASCAR later on in the year at Road America as well. So opportunity for these drivers, particularly the young professionals, to show their skills and the racecraft that you have to have in Edomitsu Mazda MX-5 to some big players in the sport. Almost airborne over the top of the rise. It's a turn a seven into eight. Now turn into nine and Thunder Valley. And it is still Jared Thomas who's been out there for a wee while now. Ahead of Atanasio, the best of the rookies in second. Paul Sitter, Matthew Dirks, who was... A little bit disappointed yesterday, did a really good first six or seven laps of the race and was setting himself up for a run at the end when the red flag came out, didn't have the opportunity to make his way back to the front of the field. Looks like the top half dozen or so has pulled away with Jared. Finally. Yes, finally. The break has been <laughs> made, and, but that's because there's so much going on behind and it is, the, in fact, the top five with the 87 of Celine Roland. I said that Gresham Wagner was fighting, and that fight has split the front four away. There's now about two seconds between the top five and sixth on down, headed by Gresham Wagner in the number five, five Spark Performance car. That's the car with the orange hood and the green side panels. Still 26 minutes to go. Second race of the weekend, Inamitsu, Mazda MX-5 Cup from Mid-Ohio. Side-by-side -side action, Aten Atanasio in the, in the black and green car and in the Air Force coloured 76. This is a nice outside-to-inside move, leaning on each other but no touching there. 
but this will put uh, Matthew Dirks on the wrong side of turn six and he can't hold that outside line dutifully falls back in behind the number 43 JTR from Formidable, from McCumbie McAleer, from Carter Enterprises, from two Spark Performance cars. That's your top seven at the moment. Nice spread of teams there as well, Shea. It really is. And at one point, we had six different teams in the top six worth of racing. But the car that still is keeping my attention, Celine Roland, he won a race at Mid-Ohio, had a not finished in the second one last year. He's looking like this is going to be a repeat. Oh, what touch, a touch. for Matthew Dirks. He was helped. He was helped there from behind going into the carousel. That will be looked at. We saw a similar incident yesterday. Moise Oreski was on the back of Tyler's car and pushed him off and got a drive through. Now, I think that's Carter in the 08. It is. And he's pushing all the way yeah. in there. Got the 76 loose. That might be bad news for Michael Carter. That's not his style of driving. I'm sure that wasn't intentional, but a slight error there. And that's put the 76 onto the lush green grass on the outside of the carousel. Has continued... But it is so close here that that will drop him down to the bottom end of the top 20. And that will be being we looked at by race control as into the pit lane. Uh, Jemison Riley for Copeland Motorsports in the 31 yellow and black car. Pit stops are not part of this race. So he's come in, he's been looked at by his team and he's going back out again. No, he's going behind the <laughs> wall. The Riley Mazda, oh, not uh, normally a full season entry share, but uh, we do see that car out once in a while for Jemison Riley. Yeah, correct. And the Riley family with their Mazda dealership up in the Northeast, they are big proponents not only of this series, but also of Mazda as a brand. So that's really unfortunate to see. They had to do an engine change earlier in the weekend, meant that Jemison started at the back of the pack yesterday. Unfortunately, he's going to have a DNF for today's race. So the fight back begins for our Paul Sitter. Number 76, Matthew Turks. Something uh, over 11 seconds between him and the leader. Sideways through the carousel for 10th place. Tyler Gonzalez in the Copeland Motorsports, number 51. And right alongside him is Jensen Altman in the Shades of Grey Mazda and goes through. And that that is a, now a top 10 spot for Jensen Altman. He was well inside the top 10 yesterday and racing very nicely indeed. Altman not getting the second qualifying lap that he wanted in the session. It's the uh, best qualifying lap that set grid positions for the race yesterday. Second best for this today. 24 car, Aaron Johnson with the side sill underneath the uh, right-hand side of the car flapping in the breeze. Not sure that's aerodynamically efficient. No, and did you notice Chris Noons there has oh. his right side door mirror turned in, as now does Jensen Altman, too. Seventh in yesterday's race. He's looking for a bit further up the top ten than just on the outside of it. And is he going to be able to take ninth? Yes, he is, wow. bringing Tyler Gonzalez with him. Yeah, that's a lovely move by Jensen Altman. Races better than he qualifies, as I said. He's really building his experience. He's still relatively inexperienced. Got caught in a couple of other people's accidents last season, which... I think rather dented his confidence as well as his master MX-5, but he's come back really strongly towards the end of last year, and he's turned that momentum into a good opening to this year's season. The young man in the number 13 for McCumbie, McAleer Racing. Some big names down towards the bottom end of the top 10 in Fastnack there for McCumbie, McAleer Racing. He's one of the rookies. He's in behind Bruno Cagnero in 12th. Then Jensen's moved up ahead of... Uh, Tyler Gonzalez and Aaron Johnson. Aaron Johnson further back than we typically see that Spark performance driver in the uh, white, red and blue, number 24 share, just coming through turn one now and heading up to the keyhole. But look at the front of the field. Jared Thomas, 1.4 seconds. That just doesn't happen in this racing. And we're exactly no. halfway through the race. No, it doesn't happen, John. We're not used to gaps forming as far as this series is concerned, but Atanasio battling a little bit with Celine Rolland. When it's time to go, Rolland and I'm sure Carter will want to go as well. That incident between Carter and Dirks still under review for race control. Celine Rolland now looking down the inside at four makes that look easy, and now he'll focus forward on Jared Thomas. The two of them are battling for the championship lead, by the way. Yeah, remember, only half points awarded yesterday because of the extremely short nature 
of the race. No option from race control. Operational procedures demand. They don't ask that once we have uh, severe weather and electrical storm activity within a certain radius of the circuits, everything has to be shut down for a minimum of 30 minutes between the lightning strikes. And as we had only 29 minutes and I think 44, 45 seconds left when the red flag came out, it was quite clear early on that that wasn't going to happen. Into the pit lane, this must be a penalty, Shea Adam. It, it is drive through for Michael Carter. Instant responsibility with the 76, that's Matthew Dirks. He's already down to 9th, 10th, 11th. He's gonna drop back at least to 28th. That hurts. Okay. And yep. through, in fact, through goes Matthew Dirks across the line. So he will be behind the person that he pushed off at the carousel a couple of three laps ago. It had been under review. It was uh, pretty much see it, call it, all the way on the back bumper. Not just a bump draft, but a little bit of excuse me. And I'm coming through. Reminder, I'll say this again, that uh, Mike Carter is not that sort of driver. Nobody in this series is. They just wouldn't last here if they were. And the race controller not saying it was deliberate, they are calling it incident responsibility. That's the terminology from the IMSA race control. I really like that. It's not saying that you did it deliberately, but you have caused someone else to have a problem. That was your responsibility. Even if you made a mistake and you missed your breaking point, it's still your responsibility. And that's why the drive through has been issued. And he's dropped all the way down to just in front David Starb in the blue slipstream performance car. So two. Uh, down to 20th position or thereabouts. So that will have moved uh, Matthew Dirks up the field. I think Matthew Dirks might be the next car up the road, but he's quite a way up the road. And it's going to be all to do now for Michael Carter in the Carter Racing Enterprises red, white and black machine. At the front of the field, the gap is 1.3 seconds. Jared Thomas in the JTR Motorsports car. Across the line now for the 76. Matthew Dirks has got about uh, eight seconds on the man who pushed him off. He's the next one across the line. So cold comfort there, shit. But Dirks is back ahead by about eight seconds. He's right on the tailpipes at the moment of Alex Matura for Spark Performance. They're heading up to the keyhole as the transgressor comes through turn one. And the good news for Matthew Dirks is that he still gets the 10 bonus points from getting the pole position. The good news for Michael Carter is that he gets the 10 bonus points for the fastest lap so far in the race. But there are many people pushing to try and take that away from Michael Carter. A couple laps ago, I saw really good sector times from Justin Piscitel, yeah. who's clearly got the hurry up as he works with Bryce Cornier to try and pack back up and get around Gresham Wagner. Gresham Wagner looks like he doesn't have very much grip left in those BF Goodrich tires. You mentioned as well that we need to keep an eye on that light, almost cream coloured number 87, Celine Roland. He's worked his way through to second place with all the carnage around him. He's got Joey Atanasio for company behind him. And you're right, Piscatel in that lilac coloured car with the yellow wheels and the yellow roll hoop. He's dragged <laughs> up into a position to be able to challenge. Gresham Wagner and Bryce Cornet, fourth, fifth and sixth, pretty much together as they come through the final corner and on to the finishing straight. 17 minutes to go. Thomas by 1.4 seconds for JTR. Celine Rollon is a Hickson motorsport driver. The number 87 in second with Joey Atanasio right there with him. Then a little gap, about two seconds back to Gresham Wagner in the number five car. In fact, he's just lost a position to the 65 of Bryce Cornet, and he might lose another one to that lilac and yellow machine side by side at the top of the hill at the keyhole. Oh, a good little cutback on the outside, onto the inside, but Wagner moves across to the middle of the road as they dive down the hill towards turn number three. Next big breaking point is at turn four with China Beach tantalizingly ahead of you, trying to drag those cars in. Come in, little master, I'll give you a nice little place to park. But all of those three drivers managed to avoid doing that. Wagner settles back into position behind Cornier. 
So that's fifth, sixth and seventh now through turn six. And who's behind them? Jensen Altman having a cracking middle and last portion of the race. The grey car <laughs> coming through and pulling along at Maximilian Opalski in the bright green and white Cortland car and his teammates behind him Tyler Gonzalez in the bright orange white and black Cortland car we're going to have a five car maybe six car battle behind Gresham Wagner for fourth place probably sometime on the next lap shit yeah, we are. And Jensen Altman really putting the right foot down and trying to move up more positions. He got around Max Opalski the last lap. He's looking at Piscatel now, has a little bit of time to try and make up. But look at Bryce Cornier getting around Gresham Wagner. That young man up into the fourth spot can smell his first ever podium finish. Needs to get around Joey F. Nasio for the best of the rookies honors, though, and try and claw back that championship. Piscatel up the inside into the keyhole and that is a position another position drop for Gresham Wagner I think you might have nailed it I wonder if he went a little bit too hard too early Wagner now from fourth uh, down into sixth position and Altman still coming and coming strongly for McCombie McAleer racing down to under a second behind this battle as they're having the scrap they're slowing each other down none of them taking the optimum racing line in the lilac car of the number 89 driver Justin Piscatel goes through takes fourth position Hickson next and next right there oh that that was a hand signal by the way a couple of corners ago but that was a fist not a follow me here's Altman coming to join the party this is fantastic stuff Again, side by side, going into nine. This is very, very dangerous indeed. Little touch from Gresham Wagner on the bright red, or the soul red, number 55 car. Oh, my goodness, mate. So tight. Number 65 car, excuse me. So tight indeed for Bryce Cornier, but he's held on to it. Here's Altman. He elbows his way through. That's been a great drive back. Altman did not qualify where he wanted to be. He was mired in the mid-teens there. And he's come back very strongly indeed. This started a mile back around the circuit with the 65 of Bryce Cornet. And definitely a bit of hand signals from Justin Piscatel there. And I don't think he's very happy with Gresham Wagner. I think you're right about that, John. It was definitely some hip and shoulder and, well, elbow and whatever else could have been thrown there. But the pass was made initially, which means that he can do it again. So keep an eye on that 13 machine because Jensen Altman is sniffing his best ever finish in the series. Previously, it was fourth. He thinks he can do a bit better than that today. Seventh yesterday when the red flag came out, and he did look to have a strong package and was another one of the drivers who was a bit disappointed. 12 and a half minutes still to go, and 1.6 seconds is an age. That's almost like having a lap on the field in Idemitsu Master MX-5 terms here at Mid-Ohio with just over a dozen minutes to go. Celine Roland for Hicks and Motorsports in the lighter-coloured car, the black car with the very bright green accents. It's the best of the rookies, Joey Atanasio. Will he stand on the podium this afternoon? Will be high noon as we come to the last lap. And which of these gunslingers are going to get the best of each other? 12 minutes to go. Thomas by 1.6. Roland Atanasio, then a gap to Piscatel. Two seconds further back, Gresham Wagner, another 1.3. Jensen Altman, the man on the move, quick again last time around. Faster than everyone, bar the leader last time around. Altman fighting his way through, then a great scrap. There is, at the keyhole, there's that scrap behind Wagner. It's closing up again. Altman, Cognier, Caniero, Gonzalez, Fastnacht, they're all there. Max Opalski, Sam Paley on the back of that as well now. <laughs> we haven't mentioned Sam's Damn. name in the 28 for McCumby McAneer Racing in 12th position. Wow. Chris Nooms has fought his way through to 13th for formidable side by side. Altman on Wagner. Fabulous move by the 13 driver. Can he hold on to it and block pass into five? No, he can't. Really just needed to lift the brake off a little bit and roll into the left-handed Apex at the top of the hill at Madness. Couldn't make that one stick, but he'll have another go. Great stuff with 11 minutes to go.
How about Sam Paley passing 17 cars so far in today's race? Hard Charger Award, yes, please. Put my name on it, lick the stamp, and send it in Daniel Ricardo terms. Paley is really pulling up. Has not been a factor this weekend. Didn't qualify well. Will not be, wouldn't have been enjoying those uh, early sessions. But now on the outskirts of a top 10 finish, and he can see, well, ahead of him, if he makes the passes, all the way up to fifth position. That's how tight it is in this midfield. Piscatel just a little bit further up the road in the lilac and yellow car. Leaders have gone through. Great lap there from Thomas, 136.9. He's pulled out to over two seconds from Roland and Julia Atanasio, who are still scrapping. Less than a second between those two. Altman having to defend this time from, from uh, Cornet as they go into the keyhole. And I hold my breath for a moment because Caniero's right there as well. They'll come out side by side. Wagner for a moment has pulled out a little bit of room now. Get back in line. Let's draft down the hill, see if we can get back on the back of the, the five car, which handily runs in fifth position. So that makes it easy for me to work out. Also looking at Gonzalez coming quickly as well down the hill in the bright orange, black and white number 51. Who else is in there? Caniero, three wide of madness. This could end in tears and here comes the 51, the bright orange car. That was at least two, maybe three positions made up there. No, it's two in the end, but Gonzalez will take that. How fortunes can change in just the blink of an eye. But how about three wide over the top of turn five, Shea? That was a great maneuver. Unfortunately for Bruno Carniero getting moved out and dropping back a few positions, it was a bold move, but a good one for Carniero to try. For Altman, though, looking in the middle is never where you want to be going through that roller coaster section. And Bryce Cornier trying very hard to hold on to it. But Tyler Gonzalez seeing the door open in front of him, sliding through up two positions. Great move by Tyler Gonzalez. The happiest man through all of this battling right now, though, John, Gretchen Wagner, because now he's got a clear gap behind him and he can focus forward. Two or three corners of battling, and all of a sudden, Gretchen Wagner has a second on the cars that were almost joining him in the driver's seat a couple of three laps ago. Altman, the big loser there, because he's dropped behind Aiden Fastnack in the... Uh, Black number 15. Behind that little battle, Caniero, Sam Paley, Max Opalski, they're together as well. Sam Paley in the blue car this year, ran black last year. Blue car with the white rollover hoop. It's the easy way to spot Sam's car. Lovely colour on that uh, dark blue. I, I do like dark blue cars. I have a soft spot for them. And he dives down the inside to make up a position on the outskirts of the top 10. That will take him to 10th position, but gets a little love tap from the... Number 21, the rookie, Caniero, sitting in third in this race as far as the rookies are concerned. Max Opalski, just two cars behind him, is in fourth, so he's going to have to keep an eye on that gap between himself. And then, in fact, there's Opalski now right with him. The bright pink car is the 32 of Chris Noons of Fordham Formidable Racing. That's a good run through to there as well, but Sam Paley making up positions for fun here. Charging through the field, there is a hard charger award, and he's surely on track to take that. We haven't talked about the leader for a while, so let's put that right now, through turns one. It is Jared Thomas for JTR Motorsports, the number 96. Silver car with the yellow and red stripes and the yellow roll hoop and the very lovely dark red door mirrors, which are all both pointing in the right direction. Tells you that he's not had too much side to side battling to worry about. Two and a half seconds. You could have added up most of the season last year, Shea, between first and second, and we <laughs> didn't have two and a half seconds in, in eight races. You are right about that, John. As uh, Jared Thomas, I'm sure you can guess which of these racetracks is his favorite that we come to every year. He was second in the race yesterday. The shortened race felt like he had a race car that would be good enough for a win. Well, today he has taken the most laps led, which will be 10 more points towards yep. his championship total. A two and a half second gap near enough. That is darn fine driving. Yep. I talked with his dad, Dave, this morning. He said they had a good feeling about the race today. Well, his feeling was right. 
Celine Roland is pretty secure in second place, but third spot on the box. Well, that's still up for grabs. The black and green car is the best of the rookies, Joey Atanasio, but Justin Piscatel has closed that gap down. Was that a little mistake? from Joey the last lap around. I don't think so. I think Piscatel saved some performance in his BF Goodridge tyres and he's right there with five and a half minutes to go. Incredibly broken up this race. We just aren't used to seeing this. And there was a little hand out of the window by Atanasio there going across the finish line. Might have just been cooling his left hand down. The glove came out from the cockpit there. Roland sitting pretty in second, but the battle is for third. Concentration underneath the racing helmet. Piscatel, huge amount of experience, and is pushing the number 43 of Joey Atanasio. That's formidable racing in third, but could be Magalia racing in fourth. Now the top five teams, uh, top five places with five different teams. Now, round the outside into turn four. For the Lilac number 89, this is the manoeuvre. If he can hold on there, oh, brilliant, brilliant late breaking manoeuvre for the number 43, Joey Atanasio. And he went straight to the left hand side of the track to cover the inside line and take momentum through. There was absolutely no opportunity whatsoever for Piscatel to get his car into a position to challenge either at five or at the bottom of the hill at six. Rookie. Maybe in this championship, but showing some really, really experienced style moves there. There was no blocking. There wasn't even much defending there. But Atanasio Shea, Adam, really showing some veteran moves and putting his car exactly in the right place on the racetrack. The place that, in fact, Justin Piscatel wanted to be. <laughs> that was a beautiful piece of driving from Joey Atanasio, trying to keep Justin Piscatel behind him. Two times the Skip Barber champ in 2009, the Mazda Road to 24 winner, and the Spec Miata MX-5 champ in 2020, Justin Piscatel. Well, Joey Atanasio, you just successfully thwarted his effort to take a podium position away. Now, the good news is he's done it once. Bad news is he's going to have to do it at least twice more because three and a half minutes to go in this contest and watch out as well just behind that battle for Gresham Wagner maybe he's got a second wind here for spark performance Bryce Cognier and Tyler Gonzalez are pretty close as well those three uh, within just on a second and this battling even just the two of them will slow them down and gradually one two three maybe yeah three cars could be brought back into the battle for the final podium spot Adonazio then at turn five over the top at Madness, just sliding the rear. BF Goodridge is around through six. He's making that Mazda really wide. Looks a little bit out of control at places, but Atanasio likes the car like that. He likes the back end moving around, likes it loose. Almost backing it in like a, a go-kart. Unsettling the back end and scrubbing off speed as you go in sideways. Also makes the car wider, of course. Might just make the driver behind think that you're going to have an incident and lift off for a moment. Piscatel right on the ragged edge as well, coming into the carousel. Had to put a little bit of corrective opposite lock on there as he came through to number 11. Leader across the line. White flag next time around, I reckon, for Jared Thomas. So just under five miles for JTR Motorsports. That's unofficial. And... My counting's never that good. Mistake in turn one. This could be the opportunity. Adonazio's done all the hard work, and here's Piscatel. Pounces immediately. Smelled blood in the water at the edge of turn one. Adonazio went onto the dirt, had to lift for a microsecond. Piscatel immediately gets up the inside into the keyhole, and that's third position disappeared. Now Atanasio needs to fight back immediately. He's right on the rear bumper of Piscatel, the number 89, as they head down towards the braking area for turn four. Which way does he go? He's pushed to the outside. Can he try the cutback? He's very good on the brakes here, Atanasio on the black and green car. And he's still got fire in his belly. Piscatel now will know that he's poked the bear here. Is there an opportunity for Atanasio? Piscatel begins to stretch away. But is it too late? to get on two terms with Celine Roulan, who's two seconds up the road. I think it is. So Piscatel is going to have to concentrate here 
on holding on to third place and Wagner pulls that train of three cars ever closer to a potential spot on the podium. White flag for Jared Thomas as they come through this time around. 2.4 miles for JTR Motorsports Engineering and the 96 car. In the sunshine at Mid-Ohio for the Inhibitor Master MX-5 Cup. Round number six, our second race here in this beautiful parkland circuit of the weekend. Great move by Piscatel. Absolutely took his opportunity. The only mistake Atanasio's made, and it's cost him a step on the box, I reckon, Shit. I think you're right about that, and I'm fairly certain, John, that we did not have a gap of three seconds at the line in any of our races last year. If we do that, Jared Thomas is blowing our stats way out of yeah. the water. Aaron's going to be very upset at, at how much he's ruining our average. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Fastest lap for the Carter Racing. Enterprises number 08, Michael Carter, way down in 19th, remember, after that drive-through for contact uh, with our pole sitter, Matthew Dirks, earlier on, 136.414, so Michael will still get the 10 points to his championship total for that. A little bit of battle scar on the rear end of the JTR Motorsports number 96, just on the left rear of the bumper, half a lap to go now into Thunder Valley for the final time. Jared Thomas took his opportunity very nicely, and this, in master terms, is an extraordinary finish. Three seconds up the road. He has destroyed the field here and will take the victory at Mid-Ohio in round six of the Inovitsu Master MX-5 Cup. Thomas by a distance from Celine Roland for Hickson in second place. McCombie McAlee as Justin Piscatel takes third, two laps from the end. Joey Atanasio pushed out to fourth, but is the best of the rookies for formidable racing ahead of Gresham Wagner in fifth. Bryce Cornet in sixth position is the second of the rookies. He's ahead of Tyler Gonzalez in seventh. Sam Peely charges up to eighth positions. How many places did he make up? Jensen Altman, another top ten finish for the McCombie McAleer driver and the top 10 made up by the third rookie Bruno Caniero for Hickson Motorsports what a race what a drive and what a finish for Jared Thomas not what we're used to seeing Shea that was destruction on another level from Jared that Thomas that was pure dominance. The brilliance of this drive, John, has resulted in Jared Thomas with, by my counts, a 95-point advantage over Celine Roland for second place in the championship. Very dominant drive. Most laps led for Jared. The fastest lap of the race still goes to Michael Carter. So even though he comes home in 19th position, gets the 10 bonus points for that. And to answer your question, how many people did Sam Paley pass? 21. That has earned him the Quality. hard charger award for today. Absolute quality. Celine Roland for Hickson in second. Justin Piscatel in third for McCombie McAleer Racing. Took the opportunity when it presented itself. What, two, three laps from home? He'd been battling with Joey Atanasio for formidable racing. Turn one, a slight miscalculation by the rookie in the black and green car. Just took him wide. Had to lift off the throttle for just a moment. Piscatel leapt on it oh that was brutal that was like a wild animal on a wounded piece of prey and there was no opportunity for Atanasio to fight back tried his best going down the hill but Piscatel snatches the third place on the podium well what a weekend for Jared Thomas lots of hand signals going on in that race we'll decipher some of those uh, for you Brilliant stuff here at Mid-Ohio, making up for the shortened race yesterday. The weather, unfortunately, curbed our enjoyment of that yesterday, but more than made up for today with a dominating performance by JTR's Jared Thomas. The number 96 silver car goes to victory lane. And the unofficial results say Celine Roland in second, Justin Piscatel in third, Joey Atanasio for formidable, uh, just off the podium, but taking the best of the rookie sports. Great racing, close racing, entertainment and action. Well, to put that all together, that is exactly what Idemitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup is all about. Thanks for joining us. Shea Adamus alongside me, John Hindorf. We'll be back for the rest of the season. You know you don't want to miss it. This
programme is a Radio Show Limited production. For more, check imsaradio.com and subscribe to IMSA Radio wherever you get your podcasts. I'm John Heindorf and this is a special programme on the Radio Show Limited Network of channels. I've effectively come back to my motorsport roots, believe it or not, one of the first, certainly one of the first major events I went to as a young fan was drag racing right here at Santa Pod and it's great to be back. I want to talk about the family nature of this part of motorsport, no better person to do that with than someone who I've known for a very long time. Notice, Keith, I didn't see an old friend. The man at the top of Santa Pod, Keith Bartlett, is with me. Keith, great to see the fans back. What's it been like for the last couple of years? Uh, but the bank account's not as healthy as it used to be. <laughs> That's number one. Um, it was uh, something I'd never experienced in my whole working career. Very strange, people not coming to work. Uh, Probably the serious side of it is uh, the amount of money you lose, and the next thing is the impact of not holding events. Yes. That's a big, I don't care whether you put on circuses, motor racing shows, pop concerts, radio shows, you're a pop band. When you don't perform, that's a very dangerous level. And if, it, if you don't perform for three months, it's one thing. We don't perform for two years, it's, there is an impact. So the hardest thing was... What do you think people forget? Do you think they get out of the habit? I think they get out of the habit. I don't think they forget. So what we, right. what we spent a lot of time doing here, we spent a lot of time keeping the brand in the front, keeping people going, marketing it. We started our own podcast up. We did a lot more television. We did a lot more of that. And we, we ran events behind closed doors at a loss, but we could at least put the podcast, we could put the TV out on it, and we kept... And then the biggest thing we did, I think at the time that the... Covid struck, we had just under a million pounds worth of advanced ticket sales for that year and we went back to everyone and said we'll give you an open account, you've got that money there, you've got two years to use it, you can draw down on it or if you really want your money back you can have your money back but we got 95% support, no one, took, no one took their money back hardly at all and they all took their credit accounts and spread that over, in fact it ends this year. Right. So. So no. what we did, we gave the public a credit to still be at Santa Pod, and you could log on and look at your little account and say yeah. how much you spent and what events you want to spend it on. How important was it to get back even behind closed doors? Because you as a 